It's a great time to move forward towards your dreams. Hey, what's going on my friends and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Victor and today I'm going to share with you three things I think you should know about the energy for the week of January 24th through January 30th. This is going to be a weekly energy update. Number one, finding your niche or niche, however you want to say it. Now this is generally a premise people talk about in business. I'm also a business coach. I help, I help spiritual coaches uh, grow their coaching business. And one of the things I tell them, I say, you gotta find your niche. You can't be the jack of all trades. You gotta find something you're really exceptional at and go all in with it. And a lot of you will find that your spirit is in a sense compelling you to find your niche. Not necessarily in business, but just in your purpose, in where you're gonna put a lot of your energy and focus in life. There is something you came to share. There is something you came to do. There is a type of expression you came to express in the world. And most of us, as we incarnate here into the 3D reality, we completely forget what that was. And we get indoctrinated and conditioned by our parents and our schools and all this stuff. And a lot of us become very disconnected from who we are and why we're here. But if you're watching a channel like this, it leads me to believe you're going through an awakening. You're going through this spiritual transformation process that's allowing you to clear away the fog, get rid of the conditioning, and rediscover your truth, your essence. And now is a fantastic time to find out what that is in a sort of grounded and specific way. I know all of you probably believe you're here to help raise the consciousness on the planet. You're here to help uplift humanity through this ascension process in some way. You're here to help. You're here to help others. But how exactly, how precisely, that can take some time. It can take some time to figure that out. But once you know it, once, you've, once you have that clarity, and it does come. I know some of you might be frustrated because you've been trying for so long to find out what that is. And you're, you're like, higher self, God, I'm ready to go. I, I want my purpose. I want that, I want that depth of life. Uh, and I just need to know what to do. And it can be kind of a length of time as you try to figure out exactly what that is. But I'm telling you, my friend, this is a phenomenal week where you're going to get uh, a depth of clarity you may have not, ha not had before. Enough, certainly, to start moving forward on because this week is a very forward-moving type of week. And if you are feeling stuck with this, what I recommend you do is, is keep experimenting. Sometimes the fastest way to get clarity is to, just to stop trying so hard to get a download and stop waiting so much as time just to move forward as best you can. And I'll give an example real briefly before I move on to number two, which is also very important. For a while, I knew I wanted to be a YouTuber like you see me doing now. But like a lot of you, I have a lot of interests. Of course, I was into spirituality. I was going through a, a kind of an intense kundalini awakening at the time. I was really into fitness. I was a personal trainer most of my life. I also grew medical marijuana in my basement. So that was also a passion. I had like four or five big passions, big things I put a lot of energy into. And I didn't like the idea of just putting myself in a box. I didn't really know which one to do, they all carried some degree of resonance. And I finally got sick of waiting and I eventually made five YouTube channels, one for fitness, one for going pot, one for all these different channels. And through that experimentation, I found, the, I found my niche. And the way I did it was uh, one day on, on, my, on my fitness channel, you can actually see it now if you want, it's called Sustainable Six Pack. It was a YouTube channel that was designed to help people stay ripped and eat like junk food and stuff if they want, uh, you know, that kind of thing. It was kind of a funny premise that I was into at the time. And I just, I just this wave came over me where I really wanted to share something with more depth. And on my fitness channel, I shared this video that I titled Encounter with an Angel. And in this video, I shared an experience I had when, uh, when I was in my later teens where I had like an actual mystical experience. It was, uh, almost like a near-death experience without dying. It was a really interesting encounter with an angel I actually had. And I, and I shared it on this fitness channel, but 
through all that experimentation, through that natural inspiration to share that particular topic on that particular day, I noticed something. As I was talking about the spiritual side, the, my, the angel story, it felt like for the first time in maybe hundreds of videos, I was, I was speaking from a deeper place within myself. I felt the quality of what I was saying was way more articulate, way more captivating, had more of like more soul in it. And it felt really, it felt different in my body. It felt like there was just a high level of excitement and passion. And after that video, I knew this, among all these different ideas, this is what I came to talk about on YouTube. And man, I'll tell you what, once I discovered that, then, then things accelerated exponentially. It wasn't long after that that I moved out of my house into a more ideal life circumstance. It wasn't long after that that I met all my soulmate friends and started having more abundance and freedom in my life. And my life literally exploded in a very expansive and ideal way from the day I discovered my niche. But prior to that, I've been looking for a long time. I was very sick of looking and there were times I thought I had found it and I was excited and then life would somehow show me that nope, that's not it and I'd be back to the drawing board, back to square one and over and over and over this went until I finally found it. And now is a phenomenal week to find your niche, my friend. Number two, this same powerful, forward-moving, high vibrational energy now on the planet compelling you to be your best, highest self in a clear way it's doing other things as well. It's not just about that. It's also, if you are willing to look, it'll help you improve your relationship harmony. What I mean by that is you will find that if there's any dissonance, any uh, unresolved conflicts, major or minor, within your closer relationships, it's going to weigh on you. You're going to feel it. It's going to feel like, like a dead weight you're lugging around. In fact, just the other day, it, it doesn't have to be a big thing. The other day I had this, uh, I wouldn't call it a conflict, but there was something unresolved between me and my business partner and best friend, Aaron Dowdy. And it was something that was like, I know whenever we have these types of things, we can kind of both feel it. And I know we are both feeling it. And I was doing this workout in my living room and it was kind of intense. And I found that I was just dogging it in the workout. I was having such a crummy workout because that idea, that unresolved situation was literally, physically, vibrationally weighing me down. I, I couldn't shake it out of my mind. I couldn't focus. And my, I had a really crummy workout that day. And that's, you could say that's an inconvenience, but it's like, listen, you two, you, you, me and Aaron, we, we love each other. And there's this potential for more harmony, more resonance. And thank goodness that this little bitty thing is carrying such a big weight because it's com it compelled us to talk. In fact, he sent me a text a couple hours later. He was feeling it too. And we got on the phone within like five minutes. It was gone. And it, it was like I, we felt this opening. It's, it's also for me, it's happening with my, my daughter. My, my daughter, by the way, is like 12 and a half years old. She's our first experience with a legitimate teenager and it's taken me a lot of getting used to, <laughs> uh, you know, learning how to navigate those waters of the teenage sort of energy. But the other night we, we had like a fight about her, her cell phone and it was like I, I, couldn't, I couldn't even sleep at night and it wasn't like a huge deal, but it was something unresolved that I could not really feel content unless I resolved it. But the next day, because of that inconvenience and experience, it compelled me. It made me realize, I gotta figure this out. And when we had a quick talk and whew, it was all better. Now, with that said, to, there's, there's an opportunity to go even deeper with this. I, I'm kind of talking mainly about surface level things, just your day-to-day -day things. It's like, don't, don't carry around resentment. Don't carry this stuff. It's, it's heavier now, that kind of idea. But also there's, there's a depth to this number two. I want to touch on briefly where you can really have a, a pretty grand awakening within your own dynamics, within your own patterning and how you relate to other people. 
If you can really not so much focus on other people, but more so yourself and how you're showing up, you might have kind of a life changing relationship related insight into how some of your patterns are in regards to other people. For example, one of the things that came up for me is, is with my daughter when we are like mad at each other that night, I realized that I have this tendency to when I feel hurt, when I feel, yeah, when I feel hurt, like, like my heart is broken sort of, I get very standoffish and stubborn and kind of callous. I have this like energy, it's not like I do anything, but I have this energy of me against the world. I don't need anybody, I, screw it. I'm just gonna go off and do my thing. And I don't care anymore. It's, it's like a little kid, childish sort of thing. But I realized I've been sort of doing that with like my daughter, my best friend, my wife. And it's like, it's, it's a very destructive, toxic coping mechanism that I've had most of my life, unfortunately. But now, because of all this sensitivity and all this energy, it's becoming more of an obvious issue to where it's like, Victor, do you really want to be responding in this way? Do you really think that's the smartest thing to do and the best for you and your loved ones? And the obvious answer is no, it's not. So this sort of highlight, you could say, spotlight on the relationships has really allowed me to, to, to discover that. And for me, it's not, it's not gone. I don't know if it'll be an overnight process, but for the first time in my entire life, it's sticking out like a sore thumb and I'm catching myself when I do it. And I'll tell you, it's hard. I catch myself when I'm doing it and it's very hard not to act it out because I've been doing it so long, but I'm finally, I'm finally in the fight. Before it was totally unconscious reaction, sabotaging relationships. Now it's like, oh wow, I gotta, I gotta trust, I got a, a tough opponent again. I, this conditioning has got some momentum, but I'm in it to win it. Anyway, that's just an example that maybe will help you shed light on some of your deeper core relationship patterns. A lot of them come from a very wounded place and they probably started when you were very, very young and it's probably something you've always done in your relationships. And if you can get to the core of it, which you can this week, you can really, it's like you can breathe a lot of fresh air and have a lot, heck of a lot more relationship harmony in your life because you're gonna want it as we get into number three here in a second because it's gonna be a fast paced, go, go, go. Let's, let's get you on your purpose. Let's get you out there in your life. But you don't wanna get carried away with this energy if there's unresolved stuff within your relationships because if that happens and it doesn't matter how far you how, how bright you shine in the sky if, if you're not happy in relationships. Number three, going all in. Sometimes, oftentimes when we discover our niche, when it's like finally, if, when you finally say, this is my life purpose, I now know what it is and I'll get to it pretty soon. Ah, you might have those kind of mixed feelings that like, it's like, wow, I, I know what it is, I just feel it, I, it resonates, but I also would feel more comfortable if I continued doing these other things that are clearly not in alignment with who I want to become, but it makes me feel safe to do so. And what I've learned just with manifestation and life in general, that big things, big changes require a lot of focus a lot of intention and a lot of energy. And in my experience, it doesn't seem to work when my energy is dispersed too much. But fear can also be a very powerful, compelling force that can tend to hold us back. And I think a lot of us, at least myself especially, I used to underestimate just how fast I can get things done when I go all in. My mind says this thing, this dream is gonna take a long time it's going to take some time. You don't know if it's going to even work. So you better be smart and hang on to these safety nets, even though they're really heavy, even though you don't want them, even though they're starting to drive you freaking bananas, it's making you feel safe. Now's the time to not let that fear hold you back because they're, 
There are times that things will take a while, but this year and this weekend in particular is not one of those times. I think you might be shocked at how quickly things can unfold when you go all in. And I know it's hard. I remember one time there was one last safety that I had before really pursuing my dream, and that was my medical marijuana grow operation. And man, that thing was having so many crazy ass problems. You wouldn't even believe it. Some of you growers out there would know I had root aphids. It's this problem with like the roots basically where I would have literally had to completely get rid of everything and, and like bleach my entire basement and then start over. And even then it would be unlikely. And anyway, all these major problems life was showing me. I had this one this weird situation where multiple times when I walked downstairs and the lights were turning on, these like high powered lights, I would see one of the bulbs almost like on fire on the inside. It would, it would kind of blow up. It would like, almost like it's going to explode. And I would always be there to stop it. And it was like, it was like there was so much dissonance, so many complications because I was holding on. I was clinging to what felt safe out of fear. The whole time my soul was saying, you don't need this. You know you don't need this. You, you feel drawn to go this way. It resonates. You know it's going to work. Whenever you go in the direction of things that resonate, it always works out. You always discover more of yourself and, and have the things you want start to show up because there's that energetic alignment. But it's not easy. But it just the word of the wise, my friends, it is a good week to go all in and let go of the past. Okay, my friends, I'm going to share with you now the tip of the week. The tip of the week is going to be a very simple premise that's going to help you really maximize all this stuff. So you actually get these awesome results I was just discussing. One word, believe. If this note card was bigger, I would have written down, believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. I'm going I'm to talk about what that even means because once you discover your purpose, your niche, and once you let go of the past and decide to go all in and you make sure your relationships are in check, what can happen is as you start to walk forward on this path, all your childhood doubts and insecurities can start blasting you up. It, it, it can really start coming online. And it's like on one hand, you feel like I've let go of the past. And now I want to move forward and I know it's the right path to go on, but I don't believe in myself. I feel so neurotic and insecure and like super doubtful. And it's really challenging to go down this road as it is. It's already a leap of faith in itself. But now that I feel so down on myself, it's like it seems freaking impossible. And I've been there, my friends. And it's a fantastic time to literally brainwash yourself to believe in yourself. It's not that hard. It just takes repetition. And a phenomenal example of this exact thing I'm trying to say, I just saw in a, a great movie a few nights ago I watched with a family. It's called King Richard with Will Smith. It's a, King Richard was the father of Serena and Venus Williams, these two epic, beautiful uh, tennis stars. And from the time these little girls were little girls, King Richard was, was like encouraging them to believe they can do anything. These little girls, they came from, they came from a very poor, poverty stricken area and they were trying to become famous and successful in a very, at that time, tennis was like for the rich, the people with the, the hundred grand a year to drop into a country club, that, that kind of thing. And these, these two little girls, it was so, so unlikely that they would be able to even get into one of those things because they didn't have any money. They were very poor. This guy had like six, seven kids. Um, but but they just believed in themselves so strongly. And these little girls, when, when they would be asked like, how are you going to do? Are you going to beat so-and-so? And they just had this like, this, this pure, this purity of confidence, not a shred of doubt in themselves because they were encouraged to believe in themselves. And they, they broke all sorts of records. They literally went on to be two of the best tennis players ever in the world. And it's, it's uh, it was such a beautiful, beautiful story. Um, and, but the problem is, I don't know about you, but I, was, I didn't grow up that way. I didn't grow up with somebody encouraging me, to, at least to that degree, to shoot for the stars. To do, I could do anything I put my mind to. But these little girls were, and it showed you what that belief got them. 
And now's the phenomenal time to realize that you can do that for yourself. I've done it. I've been where you are. If you relate to this, there was a point where it was time to go all in. I got rid of the medical marijuana grow operation, as I mentioned, and it was just me and my freaking YouTube channel. I had the clarity, but I also had the doubts and the fears that were making it very hard to go forward. So you know what I did? I brainwashed myself. I woke up every morning and I meditated and I saw myself. I visualized myself being the, my best self. I saw my future. I saw it so clearly until I felt it in my body. I charged my frequency up every day with who I knew I could be and then I went into the day with that energy. And you know what? The doubt still came up. It wasn't easy. It wasn't an overnight process, but that pure determination to believe in myself and rewire myself so that my beliefs are in alignment with who I really am, that was enough to push me over the edge and, and like the rest is history. We could all do this. Now's the time to brainwash yourself, to, to believe in yourself, to, to, that you can do anything your heart desires. And if you want to go forward with this, my friends, what I recommend you do is watch the last week's video. The last week's video, the last week's energy update, it's still very present. Some of the themes are very present in what we're discussing now and they kind of complement one another. So if you're, if you're feeling all this and you're feeling ready to rock and roll, but a little bit on the fence and need some more support, check out this other video. It might give you the exact message you need to hear to really allow you to go forward in the way you know you can do. With that said, I'll see you my friends next week, same time, Monday, every Monday, energy updates. Have an amazing day.